Welcome to the cellar. Hey guys, I got a pretty good tutorial for you today. Uh, it's kind of a little different, I guess, um, in that it's not really a technical tutorial on how to do anything. It's more of kind of a theory tutorial on editing. Um, but I think it's pretty helpful, actually. It's something that I, I kind of didn't even really realize until I really started to break things down and now I started to see. So, uh... I edited a lot of event videos, um, doing a lot of Sweet Sixteens because of a DJ company that I had hooked up with. Um, and as I began to kind of systemize editing these and breaking them down and so forth and so on, I started to realize something that I had always done in editing, but had kind of now manifested itself through this process that made it painfully obvious. And uh, I kind of did a thing on this a while ago, uh, a tutorial on editing on action and about editing on actual action and stuff like that, which is very, very important. This is kind of related to that, um, and it's also related to the editing uh, using sequences that I talked about because that's what I'm doing right here. So as you can see on the monitor here, I have um, up top here is my B-roll, which if I break down low, you can see is a lot of different cuts here. And then over here, we have uh, our main, my main sequence. So what I normally do here, if I can just zoom in what I normally do here is I will go through this this is just the camera and I will find a, a good spot and then I will cut and I will edit this until I get a clip that I really like uh, and then I'll put it in so let's add this guy here bang and I want him dancing so I might get a clip there and I like that but I wanted to talk about exactly how I choose those in and outs um, and one of the things that I've uh, really helped me to edit especially when editing to music so part of the thing that I do with these videos is I edit them to music so I want to primarily match them up on the beat now if you edit you should know how to edit to music and what that means is that you're gonna have a cut that's going to um, go with uh, something that's going on in the audio usually it's either a drum or a beat or um, some sort of uh, you know percussion or something that, that goes on that's kind of uh, high on the meter so that when you hear it you kind of recognize some sort of change going on and it kind of works together so and there is beats and rhythms in these dance songs and stuff every it's almost every couple of uh, a couple of beats every four beats or whatever it is so basically what happens is you have all of these potential editing points to work with which is great for you however to make it easy for you you want to make sure that your clips are uh, positioned right so that you can speed up your editing process and make it kind of flow with the music and this is how we're going to do that so what I do when I go through here is I'm looking for a particular now the reason why this is so good as a teaching tool is normally when you're talking about editing on action an action can be random in, uh, in an event I mean depending on what you're shooting the action is going to be totally different however for this purposes everybody understands dancing and dancing is a great way to talk about editing on action because there's plenty of action going on so it's a great way to talk about where are good in and out points to pick uh, for when you're editing especially to music so the best way to do this is what I look for is when I'm editing is I find a shot that I like and then I look for them dancing. And what does that mean? Well, when people dance, they move to the beat, just like we want to edit to. So because they dance to the beat and we're going to cut to the beat, we want to try to match those two things up. So what I try to do is I try to capture the movement from the first beat that they're dancing to to the next beat that they're dancing to or to the, you know, uh, two concurrencies of that so not to the next beat but to the beat after but either way to keep a rhythm on so that when I know that I take a clip from my b-roll and I bring it into my a-roll to match it up to the music I know that the ending point is the end of the beat and that the beginning point is the beginning of the beat which then I can then match up to any particular beat on the timeline and this will save you tons of time so again if you can notice here when she's dancing and this is relatively quick uh, so this is it so here so as you can see here, she starts here with this little movement here, and then she puts her hand down, bang, and you can see the beat hits there where she bops. So if I was going to cut this clip to be taken here, I would take it here just like this. And then we would have, moving over black, bang, that particular move. Now if I slow this down, because I shot this in 60 frames so I could slow it down and we can still get a pretty good look at it, bang, bang, see, that's pr pretty much the end of the movement right there. So I would actually want to cut it to right there. but. Bang. Now, if I bring this down to any particular part in the beat, so let's say here, I'm going to match this cut here. All right, so there's the beat. So you can see I have a cut here. You can hear that beat right there. Okay. 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to line it up here. Now you'll notice that the ending beat or the beginning beat is going to be on a beat, but not both of them because it's obviously that they're not dancing to the same song. So that's why I do this is so now I have this choice. So I may say here, this really isn't that interesting, this part here. So I'm just going to line this up to the beat here. And now I'll have this particular clip ready to go. And you can see. Right when it hits the beat, bang. And actually, if I was doing this clip because it's slow motion, I would probably put it back to regular speed. It's kind of boring in slow motion. Not a lot of movement. And you can see there. And, and watch. There's the beat, the second beat. So I might actually use this here. Now I can lengthen out the beginning here, and I know that I have the cut right when she hits the beat. So again, boom. Just about, I think it's one off. You know what? I think it's about one off. Yeah. We'll go there. There it is. And then you can see. And that's how it's easy. Now, if you do this continuously over the course of an entire timeline to music, that's why it looks really good. It's because it seems, it appears everyone's dancing to the beat and saving to the same song. Now, obviously, if you're not cutting dancing, you're saying, well, how does this relate to if I'm just cutting regular action? But it's kind of the same scenario here, is that when you're cutting the action, you should be cutting your parameters over the beginning of an action and the ending of an action. The beginning of an action and the ending of an action. You don't have to use the whole action in your actual timeline, but you should have it right in front of you so you have the beginning of the action and the end of the action, and then you know exactly where you want to utilize that. Say, oh, I'm going to take only a third of this, I'm going to take the middle third, or so forth and so on, and use it and cut it with different pieces. But at least you'll have that whole action to work with from beginning to end with no boring parts in the beginning, no boring parts at the end, just the essence of the action movement, and then from there you can work. And this is really especially valuable when cutting to music obviously if you're cutting to a narrative um the pace of the of the scene is going to be what's going to drive you here but if you're cutting to music like i'm doing for a lot of these things this is really really powerful stuff uh for really speeding up your timeline because once you have all your b-roll clips cut and you have the essence of the movements you see how quickly it is for me to uh make decisions on exactly where i want to place a piece and how i want to match it to the music and stuff like that so just a little bit of advice and stuff that I've uh, got over the years and how helped me speed up my workflow when I've been working. Hope you guys appreciate this, man. I'll talk to you soon.